come to see you. He went from your office to steal the plans. You have been questioning him for hours and have found out nothing. The casting for the 1966 TV series Mission Impossible was a careful process. The producers wanted actors who could handle the show's action and drama. They looked for strong performers who could work well together. Peter Graves, who played Jim Phelps, was chosen for his leadership qualities and acting skill. Martin Landau, who played Roland Hand, was selected for his ability to play many different characters. Barbara Bain, who played Cinnamon Carter, was picked for her elegance and experience. Greg Morris, who played Barney Collier, was chosen for his technical skills and cool demeanor. Peter Lupus, who played Willie Armitage, was selected for his strength and gentle giant appeal. The teen's chemistry was tested in screen tests where they had to act out scenes together. The right mix of talent and teamwork made the show a success. But you don't know where they are. Yes, but I can find out. The 1966 TV series Mission Impossible was directed with a clear vision to create an engaging spy drama. The director used a straightforward style, focusing on clever plots and teamwork among the characters. They drew inspiration from classic espionage films and real-life spy tactics. Working closely with the cast and crew, the director ensured that each episode was filled with suspense and clever solutions to seemingly impossible problems. The show's success lay in its ability to keep viewers guessing and on the edge of their seats with each new mission. The director's leadership and open collaboration were key to bringing this thrilling series to life. Welcome to the world of Mission Impossible the classic TV series that started in 1966. This show was all about a team of secret agents pulling off complex missions to stop bad guys and save the day. Each episode was a new plan, often with disguises, gadgets, and last minute escapes. It was thrilling to watch because you never knew what would happen next. There were funny moments when plans went sideways, shocking twists that no one saw coming, and even sad times when things didn't work out. As for the characters, it's hard to pick just one favorite because they all had their special skills that made the team work so well together. But if I had to choose, it would be the Master of Disguise because it was always exciting to see what new face he would wear next. Now, I don't have personal stories or experiences, but I know this show has inspired many people. It showed that with teamwork and quick thinking, you can solve even the toughest problems. And that's a powerful message for anyone. What about you? Do you have a memory or experience with Mission Impossible that stands out? Something that made you laugh, kept you on the edge of your seat, or taught you something? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Keep watching because there's more to come with secrets and stories from behind the scenes that you won't want to miss. So stay tuned. The 1966 TV series Mission Impossible was known for its creative set design and filming techniques. The show often used a mix of studio sets and real-world locations to bring its international espionage tales to life. Sets were built to be flexible and reusable, with pieces that could be rearranged to create different environments. This was a cost-effective way to produce the show's globe-trotting adventures without leaving Hollywood. Filming required careful planning to manage the complex stunts and special effects. The production team used miniature models and backdrops to create the illusion of exotic locales. They also employed early versions of split screen and matte painting techniques to add depth and detail to scenes. These methods allowed them to craft thrilling action sequences that were ahead of their time, making the show a pioneer in television production techniques. get a look at the attacker, did you? No, no, I didn't at all. Oh, that's a terrible... The television series Mission Impossible, which aired starting in 1966, remains a significant part of television history. It captivated audiences with its thrilling plots, innovative use of music, and a memorable cast. The show was particularly notable for its unique storytelling and the use of clever gadgets that became a staple of the genre. While the series underwent changes over the years, including cast adjustments with the departures of Martin Landau and Barbara Bain, and the introduction of new members like Leonard Nimoy, it continued to deliver engaging espionage adventures. The leadership roles portrayed by both Stephen Hill and Peter Graves added depth to the series, each bringing their own style to the team. 
Despite the passage of time and the evolution of the spy genre, the original Mission Impossible series stands out for its creativity and the way it brought families together during its original run. It's a show that offers a glimpse into the television of the past and still provides entertainment today. For those who have not seen it, it's worth watching to experience a piece of classic television history. I said we're sorry. Yeah, we were sort of under pressure, you know? What sort of survey are you doing? I ask him. The music for the 1966 TV series Mission Impossible was crafted to match the suspense and adventure of each episode. Lalo Skifrin, the composer, created a theme tune that was exciting and memorable. It set the mood for the show with a fast-paced, repeating melody played on instruments like drums, brass, and strings. This tune became famous and is still recognized today. The rest of the soundtrack also supported the show's atmosphere. Each piece of music was made to fit the action, danger, and mystery in the stories. The musicians who recorded the score were skilled and played a big part in bringing the music to life. They worked closely with Skiffrin to understand the feeling of each scene and make sure the music added to the excitement and tension. The result was a soundtrack that helped make the show a success and left a lasting impression on viewers. Legitimate, all right. Tell me this, Ed. Exactly why is the United States government doing a hush-hush geologic... In the iconic opening sequence, it was Bruce Jeller, the mind behind the show, who ignited the match that set the tone for the thrilling adventures to follow. This symbolic gesture remained a mystery until a character was finally seen performing the act in the series' later version. Greg Morris, known for his critical role, faced a life-altering challenge after a car accident in 1981 that led to extensive surgery and a significant pause in his career. His return to the screen was marked by his participation in the remake alongside his son, Phil Morris, where he made a special appearance. Linda Day George's character underwent a name change to avoid confusion with another character sharing the same first name. To distinguish her, the creators decided on Lisa Casey for her role, a name she hadn't used before, ensuring clarity for the audience. Herr Cleveland. The 1966 TV series Mission Impossible is known for its suspenseful plot and clever tricks. The opening scene with the fuse lighting up sets the tone for the show, promising excitement and clever solutions to difficult problems. The direction is sharp, focusing on the actors' faces to show their reactions to the challenges they face. The camera work is dynamic, moving quickly from one scene to another to keep up with the fast-paced story. Actors perform with a sense of urgency that makes viewers believe in the high stakes of their mission. The famous scene where the team works together to steal a document without being detected shows their skill and teamwork. The lighting and shadows create a mood of mystery and danger. Filmmakers and actors have shared that they wanted to make a show that was thrilling and smart. They worked hard to make every episode feel like a mini-movie with its own special challenge and clever solution. This approach made the show stand out and kept viewers coming back for more. The show's success lies in its ability to keep the audience guessing and on the edge of their seats, wondering if the team will complete their mission in time. That doesn't take a mind beater. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Outlasting its peers, this show stood as the final echo of a decade filled with espionage adventures. It ended its run in the early 70s, outliving similar popular series of its time. Initially, the show featured a rotating cast, with leaders selecting agents from a pool of photos, highlighting guest stars. This element faded as the core team solidified, making the selection process unnecessary. Among the team was Cinnamon, a model whose role extended beyond her looks. She was smart and resourceful, often adopting disguises to fulfill mission objectives, proving her worth as a key player on the team. The TV series Mission Impossible, which started in 1966, had a big effect on both culture and society. It showed audiences a group of secret agents who used their wits and gadgets to complete impossible missions. This idea was new and exciting. The show made people think about trust, teamwork, and the battle between good and evil. It also introduced the idea of high-tech espionage to the public. The famous phrase, your mission, if you choose to accept it, and the theme music became very well known. They were used in many other shows and movies later on. 
The series also made people think about the real world of spies and secret missions during the Cold War. It showed that with clever thinking and working together, even the toughest problems could be solved. In the world of covert operations and daring plots, two Academy Award-winning actors graced the screen with their presence. Edmund O'Brien joined the action in The Counterfeiter, while George Sanders played a key role in The Merchant. The show's briefings, often starting with a familiar greeting, set the tone for the mission ahead, with Good Morning leading the count. Peter Lupus and Greg Morris stood out as the steadfast operatives, present from the first tension-filled episode to the last, ensuring the team's success through every challenging scenario. The 1966 television series Mission Impossible was well received. It was praised for its exciting plots, skilled acting, and the unique way it showed spies completing their missions. The show won hearts with its style and smart storytelling. It won several awards, including Emmys for Outstanding Dramatic Series and Acting. These honors were a big deal for the cast and crew, showing their hard work was recognized and appreciated. It also meant the show had a lasting effect on TV and inspired future series. The success of Mission Impossible proved that a well-made spy show could be both popular and critically acclaimed. This show is recognized as a must-watch, earning a spot in a prominent list of television shows to see. Peter Graves, known for his work on the show, shared similar features with Buddy Ebsen and Martin Landau, who were also part of the cast. Bob Johnson, alongside Greg Morris and Peter Lupus, was a consistent presence throughout the show's entire run, contributing to its success and longevity. Their collective efforts helped to establish the show as a staple of its time, leaving a lasting impression on audiences and the television landscape. No chance. During the making of the 1966 TV series Mission Impossible, the cast and crew faced unique challenges and shared memorable moments. The show was known for its complex stunts and special effects, which were quite advanced for the time. Peter Graves, who played Jim Phelps, often did his own stunts, adding to the authenticity of the scenes. Martin Landau, who portrayed Roland Hand, was a master of disguise, transforming into different characters in each episode. This required hours of makeup and costume changes, but Landau's dedication to the role made these transitions seamless on screen. The series also had a special way of filming. The crew used a technique called split screen to show different angles of the same scene at once. This was groundbreaking and added to the suspense of the show. The famous theme tune, composed by Lala Skifrin, was created in an unusual 54-time signature, which gave it a distinctive rhythm that matched the show's fast-paced action. Behind the scenes, the team was like a family. They worked long hours and often helped each other with lines and character development. The show's success was a team effort, with everyone from the actors to the directors and the technical crew contributing their skills to create a thrilling experience for the viewers. The series left a lasting impression on television and set a standard for future action and adventure shows. Meeting tomorrow night at 8. I'll be there. Oh, uh, Colonel. In the early days of a well-known espionage series, Stephen Hill played a key role but departed after the first season. His exit was due to his commitment to his religious beliefs, which conflicted with the filming schedule and challenges on set that led to delays. In a crossover of sorts, the 1967 season of another popular show featured an episode with a title that paid homage to the espionage series. A notable change occurred in the later seasons of the series. A familiar line warning of disavowal in case of capture or death was removed from the mission briefings. This alteration marked a subtle shift in the show's narrative approach. The 1966 television series Mission Impossible was a pioneer in the spy genre. It set a new standard for TV shows with its clever plots, cool gadgets, and the unique way the team worked together to complete their missions. The show's format of planning, execution, and teamwork influenced many future TV series and films. 
the famous phrase your mission should you choose to accept it and the self-destructing message became trademarks of spy fiction the series also inspired a successful film franchise and several tv reboots showing its strong effect on popular culture and storytelling in the spy genre it proved that a well-crafted show could have a long-lasting appeal and inspire future generations of storytellers In the early days of high-stakes espionage on television, the tools of the trade were far from the high-tech gadgets we see today. For instance, Barney, a key operative, often relied on a slide rule for calculations, a common practice before the era of digital devices. Meanwhile, Linda Day George, who played a crucial role in the series, took a brief hiatus during the final season, missing nine episodes due to maternity leave. In a later homage to the original show, Paula Patton's character in the movie adaptation was named Jane Carter, a subtle nod to Barbara Bain's character, who also shared the Carter surname. This connection bridges the gap between the classic series and its modern interpretation, highlighting the lasting influence of the original and subsequent entries in the franchise. Oh, Anna. Lovely, Anna. In the world of covert operations and secret missions, the role of an intelligence agent is crucial and often shrouded in mystery. Martin Landau, a familiar face to many, was once at the center of such a mystery. He confirmed that he was indeed offered the role of Spock in Star Trek, a role that Leonard Nimoy eventually filled. Meanwhile, John Vernon made a significant mark with his recurring role as a villain on the show, appearing four times, just one less than Anthony Zerb's record of five appearances. Adding to the layers of secrecy in episodes like Zubernik's Ghost and Elena, it is revealed that Dan Briggs, the leader, has to step back from the action as his identity is known to key figures in the missions, though they are unaware of his true occupation. These elements together paint a picture of a thrilling and challenging world where nothing is as it seems, and trust is a valuable commodity. Behind the scenes of a classic show, a familiar set piece stood out the grand entrance used in many episodes was actually the main gate of Paramount Picture Studios. This gate, often depicted as the front of a prison, is a piece of Hollywood history in itself. Leonard Nimoy, known for his diverse roles, shared the screen with William Shatner in several series, including this one. Their collaboration spanned decades, showcasing their dynamic as actors. In a clever nod to another famous figure, the show once had a character named Barney Pose as a computer expert, replacing a Mr. Connery, hinting at the actor known for playing a secret agent. These tidbits offer a glimpse into the creativity and connections that enrich the series. Two days ago, I got a phone call. A business. In the backdrop of many episodes, viewers could see the grounds of the California Institute of Technology standing in for various international locations. The show never revealed how much time the team spent from receiving their instructions to executing their plans and wrapping up their missions within each episode. Notably, the fourth season differed from others by not having a woman as part of the main cast. Power. Out of your nose. In the world of covert operations, team members often lead double lives, but the operatives in this particular series were unique in their public personas. Cinnamon Carter was celebrated as model of the year, while Roland Han enjoyed fame as an actor. Barney Collier ran his own electronics business, and Willie Armitage set records in weightlifting. Despite these public faces, they were part of a secret team executing complex missions. Stability came in the form of Greg Morris and Peter Lupus, who were constants on the team from start to finish, with the exception of a period during the fifth season when Sam Elliott stepped in for Lupus. Their presence provided continuity amidst the ever-changing challenges they faced. Among the adversaries they encountered, one actor stood out by returning five times to challenge the team, the most recurring appearances by any guest star. His repeated engagements with the team added a familiar face to the roster of villains they had to outwit. I've been mounted by morning. In the early days of the Impossible Missions Force, instructions didn't always come from the expected self-destructing tapes. The team leaders Briggs and Phelps sometimes received their missions via records or film projectors. 
These iconic scenes were filmed in advance, leaving even the actors in suspense about their use in episodes. Unique situations arose in a few episodes where the usual protocol was bypassed. For instance, Cinnamon Carter stepped in to receive the mission briefing in action, marking Daniel Briggs' absence for the first time. Jim Phelps faced unexpected challenges like being targeted by assassins during his vacation in the town or being kidnapped and kidnapped, where Barney Collier was handed the rescue mission. Homecoming revealed a personal crisis for Phelps as he returned to his hometown amidst a series of murders. The show also hinted at a larger network within the IMF through Operation Rogosh, revealing a broader agent base and resources which explained the seamless setup of complex missions. This expanded universe showcased the organization's depth, with many agents working behind the scenes to support the core team's high-stakes operations. Barbara Bain, a lead actress from the original show, has openly stated her decision not to watch the later movies starring Tom Cruise, citing a significant departure from the show she was part of. In a similar vein, Peter Lupus revealed that the show's creator, Bruce Jeller, preferred to maintain the illusion of reality by restricting the cast from talk show appearances, aiming for audiences to associate them more with their on-screen personas than as actors. Greg Morris holds the record for the most appearances, missing only five episodes, and uniquely featured in all opening credit sequences, marking his significant presence in the show's history. Please, as I'm going to treat her. That's right. In the late 1960s, a popular American show made its way to West Germany, where only a select few episodes received German voiceovers. This initial dubbing included episodes from the first to the third season. Later on, the remaining seasons were also dubbed, and eventually every episode was available in German, with the final one being dubbed for a DVD release in 2006. The show featured a notable collaboration between Stephen Hill and Martin Landau, who met during their time at the actor studio. Landau joined the cast as Roland Hand and remained for three seasons. A unique aspect of the show was the mission briefings, which typically concluded with good luck Dan or good luck Jim, except for one instance where the message simply ended with good luck addressed to Miss Carter. Once you have seen the film, I will be very happy to answer any and all questions. Shall we? In the classic series Team Leaders Briggs and Phelps would often hear the phrase this tape will self-destruct in five seconds at the end of their mission briefings. Sometimes they were instructed to dispose of the tape in other ways, like burning it or dissolving it in acid. The recordings typically destroyed themselves after five seconds, but there were exceptions ranging from 10 seconds to a minute or even immediately upon stopping the playback or reaching the end. The memorable music that accompanied these scenes, composed by Lalo Skifrin, was unique for its time, using a 54-time signature that made it stand out just as much as the show itself. I don't understand. Very simply, were you friendly with him? Did he love you? In the world of covert operations, commitment to the mission is key. Yet, for Stephen Hill, his dedication to his faith led to his departure after the first season. His contract allowed him not to work from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, but this was overlooked by the producers, causing a conflict. Bernard L. Kowalski, inspired by the film The Ipcrest File, aimed to bring a similar sense of tension and atmosphere to the series. Meanwhile, Barbara Anderson's character, Mimi Davis, stood out as the only female agent with a past criminal record, joining the team in the seventh season while Linda Day George was on maternity leave. In the world of covert operations and secret missions, details often make a difference. For instance, Barney Collier, a master of electronics, has a background that includes a commendation from the United States Air Force. Yet, he reveals a different aspect of his past as a boxing champion in the Navy, showing the diverse skills and histories of the team members. The show's attention to detail extends to its creator, Bruce Jeller, whose presence is subtly acknowledged when his photograph is the last remaining in a portfolio during an agent selection process. Music plays a crucial role in setting the tone, with the show's theme being skillfully adapted to suit various scenes, ranging from suspenseful moments with harpsichords to action-packed sequences backed by military drums. This musical versatility adds another layer to the storytelling, enhancing the overall experience of the mission unfolding on screen. It, it smashed up. 
It was terrible. In the world of covert operations and daring plots, it was not unusual to see familiar faces taking on new disguises. This was especially true for a certain show where actors like John Vernon and William Wyndham were seen in various roles. The creator, Bruce Jeller, drew inspiration from a French heist film, Top Cappy, to shape the series' direction. A notable shift occurred in the fourth season when Leonard Nimoy stepped in to fill the shoes of a departing Martin Landau, an event that led to the revelation of Landau's earlier consideration for the role of Spock in Star Trek. This practice of actor rotation and the interconnection with other popular shows of the time reflects the fluid nature of television casting during that era. Call Major Pasek and tell him that Colonel Yakovlevich is to see it. In the late 1960s, the television landscape changed significantly when Charlie Bluedorn acquired Dezillu Productions. To manage costs, he reduced the budgets of popular shows like Star Trek and another notable series which had been quite expensive to produce. This decision was a key factor in Lucio Ball's choice to sell the company. Despite these budget cuts, both series went on to become incredibly successful, eventually valued in the billions by Viacom after its acquisition of Paramount. Tom Cruise, a fan of the original television series, was inspired to bring the thrilling missions to the big screen, leading to a successful film series that introduced the stories to a new generation. Greg Morris and Peter Lupus were the only two actors who remained with the original show from start to finish, showcasing their dedication to the series and contributing to its lasting legacy. Carrick says he wants to see you in the psych lab. He says it's urgent. Urgent? Yes, he's in Ward 6. He's on his way to the lab now. In the show, the team's leader would start each mission by playing a recorded message and then reviewing a file of photos. This routine set the stage for the challenges they would face. A notable episode aired on the same day two actors, Mike Johansson and Naomi Watts, celebrated their first birthdays, marking a unique coincidence. The show often reused the same opening visuals, changing only the audio and the images viewed by the team leader, creating a familiar yet fresh start to each episode's adventure. He can't be moved until we get a life support system here. What do I now, Doctor? Major, please. In the world of covert operations and daring missions, a team of secret agents often found themselves in high-speed chases and thrilling escapes. One such moment featured Jim Phelps behind the wheel of a 1969 Dodge Coronet RT convertible, a car known for its rarity and power. Off-screen, the lives of the actors were just as interesting. Peter Lupus, known for his impressive physique, married Sharon, a fitness consultant. Their romance began in the 1950s, sparked in the gym Peter owned. Despite the flood of attention from female fans, they chose to keep their marriage private initially. Meanwhile, Barbara Vane and her husband Martin Landau were a dynamic duo, sharing the screen not only in this series, but also in the science fiction show Space 1999. Their careers spanned different genres, showcasing their range as actors and their shared passion for storytelling. In the world of television, certain actors become closely associated with their roles, leaving a lasting impression on viewers. Martin Landau earned his place in television history with his portrayal of Roland Hand, a master of disguise. His performance is still celebrated today. Alongside him, Peter Graves became a household name as Jim Phelps, the leader of the team. Their contributions to the series are fondly remembered by fans across generations. As time has passed, the original cast members have become fewer. As of 2022, actors Peter Lupus and Sam Elliott remain the only male cast members from the show still with us. They are joined by female cast members Barbara Bain, Linda Day George, and Leslie Ann Warren, who also continue to be part of the living legacy of the series. Their collective work has ensured that the show remains a topic of discussion and appreciation among enthusiasts of classic television series. I am sure that uh, Root is doing his best for us, Ilsa. You can be certain of that. In the world of television production, resourcefulness often leads to creative set reuse. This was evident in a popular series where exterior and interior sets were cleverly redressed to serve various narrative purposes. For instance, what once served as a hotel lobby was transformed into the grand rooms of a king's palace. Similarly, distinctive basement cells were repurposed as dungeons and prisons in different storylines. These sets were not exclusive to one production. 
They also appeared in another famous series depicting alien worlds. Additionally, a notable city hall in California frequently doubled as a capital building for different countries on the show. The series is also known for its unique message delivery system, where most missions began with a tape-recorded message that would self-destruct. However, variations existed, with some tapes instructed to decompose, destroy themselves, or be disposed of by the lead characters. In a few instances, no specific instructions were given, yet the recordings were destroyed regardless, maintaining the show's signature style of secrecy and suspense. Jim, our injection will have two effects on Malik. One is he will appear to be dying. The second is he will black out. In the world of covert operations, Stephen Hill made a significant shift from his guest role on Rawhide to lead a team of specialists in a new television series. His character's leadership qualities were pivotal for the show's concept. Following the conclusion of the beloved space adventure Star Trek, this series took the baton, becoming the first show to fill its time slot. However, the transition between team leaders within the series was left unexplained, leaving viewers to wonder about the sudden change from Daniel Briggs to Jim Phelps at the helm. I know who you are. I know. I know. You're Jim. Peter Graves, known for his role in a popular espionage series, had a wide circle of friends from various fields, including entertainment legends like Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra, as well as his co-stars like Martin Landau. Leonard Nimoy, another actor from the show, felt his character lacked development, leading to his departure. This was a contrast to his experience on Star Trek, where he found more depth in his role. The series also depicted technology of the era, showcasing characters using tools like the slide rule for calculations, highlighting the pre-digital age methods. You're too eager. Right. No fake on the beating, Willie. The 1966 TV series Mission Impossible was a trailblazer, setting new standards for storytelling and suspense in television. It invited viewers into a world of secret agents and thrilling missions. If you watch this series, think back to the excitement it brought into your living room. How did it make you feel? Did it change the way you saw good versus evil? Or perhaps it sparked a love for mystery and adventure in film? Share your stories and memories. Your insights can shine a light on the show's influence and bring back the joy it created. If you enjoy these trips down memory lane, remember to like, share, and subscribe for more discussions on the classics that shaped our love for cinema. Your participation helps keep these memories alive for everyone to enjoy.